Morning, buddy. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Drifle Guitars. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. And we're here today to talk more in depth about the Gibson G45. Uh, it has by far been one of our most um, uh, incendiary uh, videos that we've put out. Um, the Guitar Breakdown series as a whole has been a little bit of a conversation starter. It's different than everybody's seen, but the Gibson one in particular, I think, really struck a chord with people. <laughs> I realize what you're saying exactly as you're saying it, and I hate you so much for it. <laughs> that was an accidental pun. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of broken up about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to cut to the chase here. <laughs> so a lot of people who saw me do that video, especially in the section where I was in my studio doing the, the, the review of how it sounded and everything, saw that uh, I had some opinions that I tried to leave back. Matt always has to get me to pump the brakes on that portion of the video. He says, Chris, just call balls and strikes, which is difficult. Um, and in fact, we went back and edited a bunch of stuff that I said out of it because it is important to me that in the Guitar Breakdown series that we do try to keep it as um, uh, just neutral as possible. I just want to say uh, what the guitar has, what it doesn't have, and... Uh, the things that I say, whether they're good or bad, are hopefully measurable metrics. Yeah. That's what's difficult about things like sound and craftsmanship. Those mm-hmm. are harder to just definitively say whether they're good or they're not. A lot more subjective. Yeah. yeah. So, what we decided to do was to do another video on this particular guitar and give you guys some more of what my actual thoughts are on it. <laughs> Pull back the curtain on Chris's brain, as scary exactly. as that sounds. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, and, and to give you guys a little bit better of an idea of where I feel like Gibson really missed the mark on this particular guitar. Also, just to give a little bit more of context for the Breakdown series as a whole mm-hmm. while we're at it. Yeah. So Matt kind of dug through, and then uh, he's going to pose some questions to me that the audience has posed and give me an opportunity to uh, address address those in that form. Yeah, and I, I think in answering those questions too, we'll get to learn um, a little bit more about what your uh, unadulterated thoughts were about this guitar and why why it almost took you off the rails in the middle of that video. So um, <laughs> there's a couple things I said, Matt's like, we can't leave that in the video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you're enjoying the breakdown videos, please consider subscribing to us on Patreon. The money from that helps us afford the guitars that you want us to review. If you uh, have a guitar that you're interested in us reviewing, leave a comment below and let us know what you'd like to see next. And uh, if you're interested in supporting us, it's patreon.com slash driftwoodguitars. Thanks. All right, so um, I think the biggest question that we got um, and and the one that uh, a lot of people seem the most impassioned about was, are you bashing Gibson to make yourself look better? Mm. That's so important to me that that's not what's conveyed to folks. Um, we've had so many, not so many, we've had some comments along those lines. And we've also even gotten some emails from folks who have taken either the breakdown videos or our shop tour videos that we've done and said, hey, it's not doing you any services as a brand to, quote, bash other manufacturers, um, especially if you're doing it to make yourself look better. But please don't ever think that. Um, what I do and what most hand builders do is it's, it's apples and oranges compared to what the manufacturers are doing. Somebody yeah. who's in the market for this guitar or even a $5,000 guitar is not in the market for one of my guitars. Yeah. Just, um, Gibson doesn't know who you are exactly. and they don't give a, they don't give a crap who you are mm. and, and, we're, and we, and we don't gain anything. Uh, we really don't get anything by if we do try and make them look bad, even if that was our concerted effort, yeah. we're not, we're not really trying, <laughs> What? but yeah. What the main goal of this channel has been outside of obviously promoting what I do and what what uh, uh, to sell guitars, obviously, duh. But yeah. the big thing was the main motivator of ha- having a channel like this is because as a guitar builder, when I go out in public and I talk to friends or people find out that I build guitars, all we do is talk about guitars. That's mm-hmm. all I do. Yeah. And I want to show you guys what those conversations are. And a lot of the times it is conversations about... Hey, what do you think about XYZ guitar? And then I get to reveal what my real thoughts Kick are. Kick the tires. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. because for years I just did repair work to really pay the bills and then guitar building on the side. I stopped doing repairs about four or five years ago. Um, but in the process of doing repairs, I'd get my mirror inside these guitars and just be shocked by some of them. And the biggest offender almost always was Gibson. Um, and I would be outraged on, on behalf of the customer because I would have this you know, this super excited client come in because he just came from the music store. He's just saved up for the last couple of years. 
and he's bought, he's plunked down a, you know, a, a mortgage payment on a guitar, and he wants to know what I think. Mm-hmm. And it's a very difficult thing to do as a luthier to basically try to be honest and be like, you kind of wasted your, there's way better money to be spent on a different brand of guitar uh, without making it feel like I'm attacking the person. I'm not attacking the person. Um, I'm upset for you. I'm upset because you you fell for the name on the headstock. And Gibson has had a real long run lately of just relying on people loving that name on the headstock. And I'm, I'm outraged about this guitar, and I have been outraged about uh, the bad craftsmanship in many guitars, not because of the manufacturer, but I'm, I'm outraged because the customer doesn't know any better. Not, and it's not their fault. So much of this stuff is hidden, or as a builder, because I build guitars, I know where they're cutting corners, where they really shouldn't, or where they're cutting corners where they don't need to because it doesn't save them any money. And at some point, what we wanted to do with this channel is to help you guys as consumers of guitars to better understand your instruments so that you can be better buyers and have more intelligent conversations with one another. And that is essentially what that breakdown series is trying to do. And so when I say something isn't good, it's because it's not good. It's not because I don't, uh, by getting you to not buy this Gibson G45, you now might be a client of Driftwood Guitars. No, that's almost never gonna be the case. Um, I just want you to spend your money wisely. That's all. I just want you to, to know that if you're gonna drop $1,500 on a guitar, that you are getting, you know what you're buying. That's it. So uh, the next question that we got a lot of, and um, something that a lot of people didn't seem to understand, I guess, is why is glue squeeze out a big deal? Because you do harp on that in yeah. um, pretty much every single breakdown. That's a big key factor that you look for. So why is that, why is that one of the balls and strikes? Yeah, and that's interesting because I think on face value, it's really easy to see glue squeeze out as a who gives a crap, right? I mean, right. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, hurt the guitar it sonically. Hurt the sound. Yeah. Like I don't see it. What do I care? As long as the back looks good. But to me, it's a further representation of the care that uh, of a factory, the employees at a factory are putting into. I mean, anybody who hand builds guitars is not going to have much glue squeeze out because they're, they're so focused on the one guitar. And I get that in like a factory situation, it's just moving down the line and it's probably really easy to let glue just, you know. But uh, it, it's it's part of that pride of craftsmanship conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, you if, if, if they're going to charge, I don't care what the guitar costs to me. I think that it shouldn't have glue squeeze out. I think that's the main thing. It doesn't cost any more money to just clean up a little bit of glue than it does to not. And that, that point is this, like this is a, this is a 12 to $1,300 guitar with terrible glue squeeze out. And this is a $500 guitar with no glue squeeze out. So that's proof right there. Yeah. Like, so if that one doesn't have glue squeeze out, this one certainly shouldn't have glue squeeze out. So yes, it doesn't matter in the big picture, right? Uh, like you're probably going to be out of sight, out of mind and never even notice that it doesn't have, that it has a glue squeeze out. But you should care that Gibson doesn't care. Fair enough. Um, so, uh, and to that end, a lot of people were asking, well, it's made in America. Shouldn't we just be happy for that? Mm. Uh, I think the opposite. I want to, as an American, if it says made in America on it, I want somebody to, if they see this, especially in another country, then to go, yeah, I mean, American made, that means it's going to be really good. Uh I get that our cost of labor is more expensive here. I get that, but that's not an excuse for bad craftsmanship. That might be an excuse for, you know, trying to keep cotton materials costs down to compensate for labor costs, but bad craftsmanship, there's just never an excuse for that in my opinion. There's just not. Um, especially um, when the brand is really, really built up around this aura of it's, it's a quality guitar. Um, so yeah, I just think that, uh, yeah, um, if, if, if I get a good, like, I like to buy German-made tools. Mm-hmm. This, this is a good example of this. There's a, you know almost always if it's a German-made tool that it's going to be really well-made. The engineering is, is is awesome. Of course, as an American, that's what I think. I'm, there's probably Germans who are watching this who are like, oh, God. <laughs> like, you, there's, we have some, we have our fair line of crappy uh, tool companies, too. But I would hope that when somebody in another country gets an, gets an American-made whatever product that they, they know that it's going to be really good, and I would hate to know that this is what's out there representing my representing my country as a, as a, just a countryman. Yeah. Like, I think that that's why that should upset you. Um, yes, things you should expect them to cost more if it was made in America. And right. I know that I'm always happy and, to fork and over And being money. made in America is a good thing. Yes. 
It's something, but, yeah. but I want it to be really good. It's mm-hmm. hard to... I'm also not going to spend my $1,200 on a guitar that is not even as good as one that costs a third as much. Right. So, as a, just as a product, like, it should be better made. It yeah. It should be... Or at least made as good as the $500 guitar. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that, that'd be a starting point. Um, and so, uh, I think another... This is more a question from me, but we see a lot of this happening people tend to tie up their identities with a brand. So like you're a Gibson brand or you're a Gibson man. Your, 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 your dad was and your grandfather was and they always bought Gibsons and you will buy Gibsons until the day you die. After seeing this breakdown, like is it wrong to still love Gibson and to even still want to, to buy this guitar or any other Gibson guitar? Yeah, I mean, in fact, we've had some comments along those lines of like they saw the review and though they looked great to me, I'm ordering one. Cool. Yeah. Um, and we, Matt and I have had that conversation, that philosophical conversation a few times, like brand loyalty and how you suddenly, yeah, you become tied to it. Like, I think a good example here in the States is um, like Harley Riders. Mm. You know, they, oh, they yeah. basically wrap their entire identity around the brand of motorcycle that they drive or ride. And uh, that's always been fascinating to me. Um, and we're all guilty of it, right? You know, sure. you're a Mac guy, you're a PC guy. You're, you're I've only hot... owned Toyotas my whole life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, oh, the fact that you could never show up to a, a bluegrass show with a tailor. Oh, God, they'd laugh you off stage. I yeah. know, <laughs> and I think that that's just so funny, right? That's just hilarious. Yeah. You know, can you imagine showing up to uh, with a Paul Reed Smith acoustic, like to a uh, picking round? Uh, but and then like you know uh, like at worship bands it's always Taylor guitars. Oh sure, it's and like, in Celtic music too. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's Taylor it's or Taylor. nothing. Yeah, and that's just so fascinating to me. And we're all guilty of it, right? But I think that it's fine to see this and still feel uh, like uh, it's it's okay. It's a growing pain or whatever. Right. But I also think that if you are loyal to Gibson, that probably comes from an earlier lineage of being loyal to Gibson. Yeah, uh, where the guitars were probably built a lot better, and this should upset you. Well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look into the camera and say this because I'm I'm talking to one specific person, and you probably know who you are. Just because we're bashing Gibson does not mean that we're bashing you. Exactly, <laughs> it's really important. Okay. Yes. If if we ever meet you, we like you. <laughs> we would love to sit down and play some music with you and talk shop with you. Exactly. That would be really cool. Yes. But, Gibson should still be held accountable for things that they do wrong. That's it. Please, yes. I'm so glad Matt said that because I think that that's what's important is that um, this whole series, this this whether it's the factory tours or it's these Gibson videos or these breakdown videos, is never it's never us bashing anybody who owns either the brand of guitar or that specific model of guitar. Um, what I am trying to do is offer a service of I view these guitars differently than you do because I'm a builder as well as a player. And so I want you guys to be able to take advantage of the fact that I can maybe see some things that need improvement that you would never see. Uh, and it's not a bash against you. It's a bash against the company. And I'm mad on your sake. And if you're a Gibson fan and you're okay with this, then I think that at some point you have to analyze whether or not you're just defending it because you feel like it's an attack against you. Mm. And you sh- it's not an attack against you. This is an attack against you. This is this is a kick in the teeth for you because if you're a fan of Gibson and Gibson knows it, they know that you're going to buy this guitar regardless, and they're taking advantage of your loyalty. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so the the final question I want to ask you, Chris, is what is the real problem with this guitar? And like, don't hold back. Like, say, like, go ahead and go ahead and say now all the things that you wanted to say during the breakdown because this is the forum to do it. This is yeah. not. We're not trying to make this an objective space. This is yeah. just your personal thoughts on it. So before I go around slinging arrows. Uh, just reiterating again that me talking bad about this guitar is not me talking bad against anybody who likes this guitar or talking bad against anybody who likes Gibson. And again, we don't have anything to gain from doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just, I want you as a buyer to know that your money is well spent. And in this case, it's not. One of the biggest things that is the hypocrisy of these modern Gibsons is that it says right on the label, it's got the style G45 serial number is hereby guaranteed against faulty worksmanship and materials. Mm. And like guarantee it's a it's a sticker guarantee. <laughs> yeah, and workmanship is the big one there. Um, cuz workmanship is uh, uh is supposed to represent the employees of Gibson. That's the part that represents the employees of Gibson, mm-hmm. not the materials. And that means that they take pride in building these things, right? They're supposed to. And the fact that 
there is glue squeeze out. There's a random piece of, of wood glued to the um, soundboard. It shouldn't be there. Um, there's like this dowel on there that looks like a beaver chewed it off and stuck it on there with glue squeeze out. That's all representative of bad workmanship. And that doesn't cost any more money to do a good job. What is the old saying? It doesn't, co it doesn't cost anything to be nice. Or what, Oh, yeah. You know, it costs you nothing to be nice. It costs you nothing to be nice. It's the same thing with these guitars. So many comments were like, well, what can you do for $1,200? You know what? My material cost on my guitars is substantially more than that. Just the materials alone. But if you were to say, build me a guitar that you'll sell me for $1,200, I guarantee you that it would at least not look so crappy on the inside. It wouldn't look crappy. You know why? Because I care about what I do. And I understand that in factories that things are a whole different animal than what I do here. They have to just move down the line, get to the next guitar. But there's, the proof is, once again, as we do more of these breakdown videos, that these cheaper guitars... It can be done. It can be done. And you're yeah. going to go, well, the, you know... They're able to hire more employees because the work, you know, the labor's cheaper and all that stuff. But you should just be outraged by the fact that Gibson, this is the part we cut out of the original breakdown video, Gibson feels, uh, this is an opinion, that you should be so honored to own a Gibson that they'll just do, they can do whatever they want and you're still going to buy it. And that's a slap in the face to you. Not by me, not by me because I said it, but by Gibson because they have the, uh, the, the audacity to actually do it. They have the audacity to build this guitar that is basically should be a four or five hundred dollar guitar that i wouldn't be bashing if it was four or five hundred dollars mm -hmm. and put a twelve hundred dollar label on it and you're going to go out and buy it because it says gibson because you trust gibson because the current owners of the company the current ceo and the higher ups are basically slapping in the face of all the people who built up the brand name over the heritage of the company for 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 you know 50 7500 years the gibson's been around um people in the past who did the hard work to make these guitars really worth it now gibson's relying on your loyalty to the brand and and knowing that they'll buy it anyway sir you need to tone it down okay? yeah you're, you're hitting guitars <laughs> yeah they, they go it's, it's the worst way to say it is in my mind i feel like some CEO some are going the customers are dumb enough they'll buy it you know and and that's yeah. and that's not me saying that that's to me the work says that the work yeah. the Gibson, that's what the work conveys to exactly you. and so when I'm outraged about this guitar or whatever guitar in the future or I'm prideful or I'm excited about another guitar because it's really well made uh, that's I'm doing that hopefully on your behalf as as a customer I don't buy guitars I'm not a, I'm not a guitar I'm not somebody out there who buys guitars. These are the, this Paul Reed Smith, which was our first breakdown guitar, was the first guitar I have bought in my entire life. In my entire life, I've never bought a guitar. Because my first two guitars were when I was in, that was like in middle school, my yeah. parents bought for me. Yeah. Um, I've always built my guitars. So like, I'm not the, the person who's, I have nothing to gain by telling you this is a piece of crap, other than providing a service for the guitar buying community as a whole and saying, know what you're getting and you should question what the manufacturers are doing and if it's crap call it out as crap and hopefully get them to do better because the gibson label should mean something right um you know and 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 when i can go out and spend thirteen hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars on a on a guitar that's that's indian rosewood and built super high quality with no glue squeeze out uh has binding and abalone trim and doesn't have a sheetrock plastic screw in the bottom of it like Gibson doesn't have a leg to stand on, in my opinion. This is completely unacceptable mm. for the name Gibson. And that that's that's what we were trying to get across. And that's what I didn't want to say in the breakdown. But um, you should expect more for your money. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, listen, if you guys uh, have any thoughts you want to contribute on this discussion, please do so in the comments. Feel free to start a fight. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. If you think that uh, if you think that Chris is the devil, um, tell us why. <laughs> uh, yeah, and listen, we we really we appreciate all the discussion that you guys um, and and you know the emails, and we understand why you might feel frustrated by this. Um, but uh, yeah, leave us a comment and tell us also if you liked this discussion, we might do it some more on some other guitars. Some more of the breakdown videos. Yeah, if uh, if there's a guitar that comes through that we have more that we want to say, we might just say it if you enjoy it. So yeah. Yeah. We, we appreciate you. Um, yeah. Don't be too mad at me. Well, <laughs> too late. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. See you.